Welcome back to New Amsterdam Mayor, the podcast for creators. Little boys, the mayor here in the mayor's office. And well, I saw an email a couple of days ago about a Picasso painting being actually burned, and I perked up. And so my guest, he's interested, he is back to talk about the burned Picasso and more, and what that means for art of today and the future. He's interested, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm amazing. Yeah. <laughs> amazing does not begin to describe how I'm feeling. But it's it's true what I said. I, I saw the burned Picasso in a subject of an email, and I went, are you kidding me? You're actually going to burn a Picasso? Walk me through this, and what does it mean for, for your space? Yeah. Uh, yes. So um, it's not the unique one marketplace that's burning it. It's an artist collective that is burning it, and then putting like the resulting NFT into our marketplace. So the, the idea is to, believe it or not, preserve the piece, uh, mm -hmm. preserve it by making it immutable in the blockchain forever, and then transferring the value from the real world where it's burned mm -hmm. into the blockchain metaverse or like the NFT metaverse. So this is, this is, this, this will sound weird uh, because, Please. um, so the, the, uh, one of the things that that, that, that is a, like a regular concept in today's blockchain um, is that there, there are these concepts of bridges, bridging between like one blockchain to the other, mm -hmm. one chain to the other. The way you do it is you burn tokens on one chain okay. and then you mint them again, create again, recreate them on the other chain. So this effectively moves the chain uh, no, moves the tokens from one chain to the other, right? Now, with the Picasso, um, this anonymous artist collective is taking it a step further, bas basically by, by treating reality as a chain. Mm. So you're burning it in the real world, and then you're taking the resulting value into an NFT that you minted within the digital space. And that NFT becomes the sort of value and the provenance, the history of that art object. In this case, the Picasso. So um, yeah, it's immutable in the blockchain forever and uh, we're making it immutable. It has digital immortality. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there for me, right? Uh, I remember Picasso because I had to study him in school and I was not that impressed. But you can argue he's one of the biggest artists of all time. And so when I heard the burning Picasso, I thought you were doing the opposite. I thought you're making a copy, like burning CDs. But no, there is actually an original sketch of Pablo Picasso's work out there that an anonymous art collective is actually going to destroy and in turn, put it on the blockchain right. as an NFT. I got to just maybe assume or imagine that some people have the up in arms or a little bit ruffled feathers about this. Understood. And 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 we, we also understand that perspective. Um, and we know that his works are beyond influential. Um, like there, there is a, a way to see it that is actually uh, more of a, like, I think I think more of a view of um, a, a deconstructive view. Um, we have always had like an uh, aesthetic view about like provenance, value, uh, what is authentic, what is the mm -hmm. legacy of an object, and it's always been important for art because you need to understand the history of the object to understand how like it's worth something, how it's valuable. The Mona Lisa wouldn't be this uh, valuable if it hadn't been stolen like decades mm. ago. The, the, that's that's actually part of its history and that's actually part of its like value uh, chain, I guess. Now, what, what, what the Picasso is currently, it's a physical object. Physical right. objects can have provenance, of course, but the provenance is not automatic. It's not directly input into the ledger. Like if someone uh, does something to it, but no one sees, then right. if someone tears it up and no one knows who did it, then the provenance isn't there. But once it's actually an NFT and the physical copy is destroyed, 
And that is the only copy. They're like the in-world copy is the only copy. Mm -hmm. That in-world copy carries with it uh, the fact that because it's on the blockchain, all everything that happens to it, everyone who owns it, everyone who gets transferred it, everything is like locked into the blockchain and you know exactly the provenance of this item. So that, 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 that becomes a different way to look at art in a way that in some ways it makes me you, you ask if, if reality has less provenance and, and less like proof of authenticity than the blockchain, mm -hmm. then is the blockchain more real <laughs> oh, in, in a way. Yeah, reality. It, like, what it, is it, reality? Yeah. What is reality, right? I mean, I mean, this is this is starting to go rogue in here, but like DMT, right? <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. This is not really sure. but, uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, dude, this is preserving a single piece by making it immutable on the blockchain forever. Immutable, like even in the case of like. Someone asked me, like, they're, they're, like I was, I was asked this question like a couple of days ago. Hey, dude, you're burning a Picasso. You, what if, what if something deletes it? No one's, no one's gonna be able to delete it. Everything's interplanetary. All the blockchains are interplanetary. Everything is public. Okay, what about there's like nuclear war? <laughs> nuclear war. Yeah. Probably the sketch is also going to get destroyed. There's less chance of the sketch being destroyed if it's already an NFT and that is the main copy or the main uh, object. So it, it is it is kind of scary in a way because we, we, we trust physicality because we see physicality, we see physical things as uh, being more real. But, you know, at the same time, when you're, you've been in the blockchain space for a while, you, you've seen metaverses, you've seen virtual worlds, you've seen people hawking NFTs, and NFTs, um, it, 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 it doesn't bother me as much as other people would be bothered, to be frank, but mm. I do understand why bothered, bothered with the destruction of this NFT, of, of, of the physical object, because it seems like a violent act, right? Like, because it seems like, you know, book burning, censorship, and, and, and destroying this piece of art. I get it, yeah. I get it. Yeah, sure. But the thing is, you need, this is this the the idea behind this is wh whether we want Picasso to be just kept like this particular Picasso to be just kept in like a museum somewhere and uh, never visited and only seen by like one or two people per year, or do we want it to have a legacy that mm. lasts for eternity? And it's, it's a global legacy, as I said, interplanetary storage, man. Everyone's going to be able to see it. It's going to be exhibited everywhere, even though it's only owned by one person. Uh, it's, it's a version of preservation. So uh, it is not a violent act in that way. It is a transformative act from, from one object on one chain, the reality chain, to the blockchain. So you mentioned uh, NFTs before. Uh, you've been a friend of the show, and I appreciate that. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind that NFT, NFTs are here to stay. There's no doubt in my mind that blockchain is here to stay. But I, I have a little bit of a concern that maybe okay. there may be a time where NFTs will be, they'll still exist, but will not be in the public eye. It may go back underground to use a bit of a, a slang word here. Is that not a concern having our art on this blockchain if it becomes in theory less accessible than say a museum to people if they're not tapped into being savvy about NFTs in the blockchain? Okay, so one of the things that 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 all blockchain startups do is uh, everything is open, open source. Everything can be copied by anyone else as in not the art, but the mechanisms, like um, I have a marketplace, a unicorn marketplace. Everything is auditable. I have uh, a lot of a lot of marketplaces out there, are also very very auditable. Uh, we have uh, uh, several projects ongoing that are like everything has a GitHub. The GitHub is clear, and if we request access, you can get it. And additionally, like even if uh, like the project itself is not open source, 
the tokens are very, very open standards, uh, like most of the projects. Uh, so uh, like I actually mentioned before, right? Like if you meet an ERC-1155 on Unique One, you'd be able to see it directly on OpenSea, even though they're mm -hmm. like totally different places. So mm -hmm. things can move from one marketplace to the other. It's not by bridging. It's not the, the, the stuff that I mentioned before, but it's just because it's open blockchain standards. Um, you can go into like my crypto voxels wallet. Crypto voxels is a metaverse. Crypto voxels wallet, and you can see like all of my wearables. Theoretically, theoretically, you can create a new metaverse based on the objects in my crypto voxel wallet, and you can basically use exactly the same standards and just recreate them. Okay, so point is, if like for example, the largest NFT store in the world closes down or gets less popular or nfts themselves get less popular mm -hmm. right you still have these nfts in your wallet you still have the proof of ownership of those nfts in your wallet now mm. if in the future like uh, someone else creates a new marketplace based on the same standards or someone else creates like a new uh, nft standards based on the old one you can transfer these exact uh, art pieces into that uh, platform. There's actually not a lot of risk of actually having all NFTs be um, basically uh, lose popularity. Actually, there, there's there's not a lot of issues there because it's all about the platforms. Like mm -hmm. if I go into my crypto voxels piece of land, which is basically where I do my gallery stuff, the VR gallery stuff, basically. Um, it, it, it looks like a game. It looks like, a like, you know, if you've played second life, you, you know, it's, it's similar yeah. to second life. It's a bit more blocky, probably a little, a little bit more Minecrafty. <laughs> yeah. I can basically bring my art, which I minted on unique one or on OpenSea or on rareable. I can bring them in world okay. and then I can exhibit. Them. Now, when you exhibit them, you create experiences, right? And those are like different experiences than you see in like. Rarible and unique one and all the other like 2D uh, stars. But like, it's also an experience. So your art is still there and your art is something that you can still exhibit. You can still show that, hey, I actually own this thing. And uh, people actually walking around can see. So the value becomes sort of like the value of a physical object as well. Because um, in the real world, physical objects don't carry their history, but these do, including like their price history. And secondly, in the real world, what is similar though, in the real world, you don't need like a certain platform to see one thing. Like this laptop is something that I can see in my room. I bring it out of my room. It's still a laptop, right? Right. And NFT is exactly the same thing. It's in my wallet. So if I take it out of my wallet and bring it to Rarible and show it to people, people see it as that. And that is that, that exact art object i bring it into crypto voxels and put it in the game it's also like that it's also the same piece of art so um that transferability ensures basically that even if there is a uh like um a marketplace a large marketplace becomes inaccessible or gets killed for some reason the art itself that object is still accessible yeah like even if there's like a major, like an apocalypse, like nuclear <laughs> apocalypse, right? right. And, <laughs> and 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 like uh, EMPs, and probably the interplanetary blockchain gets stuck, or like no blocks get produced for several, like well, for for an amount of time. Once everything gets synced up again and restarts, actually, like the 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 objects are still there. It's actually a lot more safe than keeping it in like the nuclear apocalypse scenario. It's a lot more safe than keeping it physical. Like even the Picasso, like if it if it's if, if there's a nuclear war, God forbid, we're talking about Denver here, by the way. So, right, right. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, then Denver guys. I mean, <laughs> it's 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 uh, so um, the digital thing is gonna be preserved. Like if, if there's nuclear war, like the blockchain might stop for a while. Maybe there, there might be issues with the blocks for a while, but remember this is interplanetary, right? So, so the 
blocks on the like other side of the world will still be basically be produced. Everything just needs to sync up again. And at the end of the day, you have the NFT, you have the digital object back. Um, it's more, it is preserving. It is actually preserving by making it immutable. It's probably um, a bit, a bit, you know, for some people it might be like, it makes them like, uh, like it gives them the willy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But no, I mean, yeah, this is this is actually preserving it uh, a lot better than the physical world ever could. So let's talk about this, the actual act of, right? So I, I'm assuming, because we don't know who the collective is, they're anonymous, but they're going to have some kind of documentation, some val from validation of the actual burning. And I guess, is it an event? Is it going to be streamed somewhere? Can anyone interact with this? Can we all be a part of it? How does that work? That... Uh, Picasso is going to be physically burned and live streamed June 30th. Actually, it says on or around June 30th. They're being coy. So it's around or it's probably 30th or like the 1st of July. And uh, you need to follow Burn Picasso on Twitter if you want to get like details of the burning. <laughs> oh man, you're just giving the haters an invite to like just roll up there and throw shade. <laughs> Yeah, you see, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, here's the thing. This actually creates conversations around art that probably wouldn't be conversations, like if this wasn't a thing, right? This act actually actually brings art out of like museums and like, um, yeah, I mean, storage places <laughs> for the art and just brings it to the fore. We want that conversation that kind of conversation is actually something we're going to have to talk about yeah i mean thinking about it like when when ai actually reach human level and like um we reach like the transhuman stuff of uploading your minds or like elon musk finally gets around to creating that neural link thing that connects your brain to a computer that finally that would be similar question <laughs> That would raise similar questions, right? I mean, mm -hmm. which part is real? Is uh, is the stuff you're seeing like with your eye holes real, or is it like the the stuff that is being piped in? And you know, like we've we've talked about the whether the immutes uh, the the immutability and like the provenance of things makes it more real in the blockchain space than in the real space. That's yeah. one. Yeah. Um, what about like? when the experience becomes super real and mm. and like it's is first of it's really real like it's super real it's it's more real than real right and secondly it is also um like it has more provenance than reality does is is that is that reality or is this reality so that that that's something we're going to be talking about this is just like like in the wikipedia page of this entire journey this is yeah. probably like the first paragraph, like the first, probably the first item on the list or the first or second, because Banksy, there's a Banksy right. that was burned uh, this year. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time like a Picasso has been burned. So, well, not yet burned, but it's going to get burned uh, once, I guess, I guess once this um, episode comes out, you only have like one or two days to, to follow burn Picasso and, you know, wait for the live stream. Yeah, make sure you and, do that. You can follow the Burnt Picasso on Twitter and at unique one underscore UO. I know I'll be there to see how this turns out. But when I look at the actual idea of, of the, uh, there's a part of me that has to grasp on old concepts and make sense of new ones. I'm, I mean, I'm a human being, right? I remember in the 90s where things were going into the computer. It was a big deal. You know, got old people were like, I like my stuff physical. So I'm trying not to be that person. And there's a lot of things I love about uh, the NFT thing. But we're talking about this before we went live on air. Why the burning? We can, like, put it in a capsule, put it in a mm -hmm. rocket ship to Mars. We can bury it in Atlantis. <laughs> Why do the one thing that was basically married to censorship when it comes to actually destroying art and destroying parts of the culture? That is, that is, that is actually a good point. And uh, the the way uh, so this is this um, the fact that it's using fire might be an issue. 
as in like it's been historically used to burn books like mm -hmm. you know uh, and the, the, i understand 100 percent, completely understand the way we're doing it though is that uh the focus is actually in the act of destruction in the real world and recreation in the physical world uh, in the in the in the blockchain world and it is a transition basically um the physical piece because it no longer exists the nft is the thing that carries its legacy for eternity yeah so this is the transitioning process and uh, i do understand that the choosing of the process like of burning sounds like it's something that you know connects back to censorship but the from the blockchain perspective that's what we do with tokens <laughs> when we bridge oh. it we burn it on one side and then like we bring it to the other so i guess um it's a shorthand for the blockchain people that means one thing but it might mean different things for uh, other people but i promise you i'm pretty sure uh, the anonymous artist collective is uh using it in like the blockchain meaning sort of like destroying and then bridging because that's what they want to do it's a version of preservation instead of destruction how do you personally define real we're talking about what what does real mean but what do you personally essentially decide what's real and what's not real Ooh, okay philosophical question i yeah. would define real as something that is uh okay I, okay, find real as something that has value for my mind. As okay, this can we like cut for a bit? Like, hey, well, cut. I can't. I can't stop it. I'm making a note to cut it part out. So, okay, all right. So, yeah. um, I don't know actually. I don't know what I define okay, as real. I, I, this, this, this might sound. I, I have a few definitions, but it might sound strange. So I'm just gonna do it like in an experiential way. Okay, like uh, so. so as far as your deliverable, so can, okay. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try, okay. Try delivering it. If, if it sounds weird, like just cut it out. Yeah, sure. So, what is real? Um, so from an experiential perspective, that's the only way I can actually can actually tell you that. Um, I don't have a, my own definition of what is real of what is not. But I've been on the metaverse for like ten years. I started in Second Life. I actually started even earlier. Um, before Second Life, there was something called Black Sun with double X, like many years ago. It's in the 90s. And um, at Active Worlds was before that. Anyway, so Second Life, right? I treated Second Life like an adjunct to my real life. And here I say real, real in the colloquial term, right? Like this is this, this physical reality. But it doesn't make it less real. I actually, when I'm in Second Life, I've like I've met neighbors that have become lifelong friends. Like they're still my friends even now. Um, the human connections are real, and you might actually, even if you're not doing metaverse stuff, if you have chat applications, you have social media, the stuff that you have on your phone, those are actually mini metaverses of their own. Just like very you know, low grade, low physical metaverses, low reality metaverse, low poly metaverses. Mm -hmm. You have Telegram, you have WhatsApp, you have Twitter. You interact with people and you meet them. Are those real? Are those real relationships? I think they are. I think some of them might be more real than reality because you, you the, the, because like the art of human relationships is, is a meeting of minds, right? And now because of the pandemic, We've, we've all seen that meetings of minds are, are like, you know, physicality sometimes actually detracts from it. Mm. So um, the metaverse takes it a step further, of course, by actually also simulating the physical. So uh, I'm currently on a world uh, called uh, Crypto Voxels. And when I say I'm on or in the world, um, I'm actually like, I have land there and these are NFT land. So these are like buildings that I actually own, they're on my wallet, they're in my wallet. I run galleries there, I actually do work there. I can get paid for doing stuff there, events even. Um, 
so the in-world stuff is getting more and more real because like, of course I have avatars there. So when, when we're actually looking at how the metaverse is, is constructed, it takes it a bit of a step further than just chat applications and also like copying an experience that is similar to physical reality within the world. Now, I think that's real too. Mm -hmm. I really think that you know, because the social experiences are real. When you're talking about, I don't know, games, like um, you say a game is real if it's realistic, if it has yeah. like realism, if it has like the, if it kills your GPU, if it, if it's uh, like two gig download just to start the game, or like now it's like five gig, six gig downloads just to start the game, right? So, uh, this is a different definition of real. That I'm talking about when we're talking about metaverses because metaverses aren't really games. Mm -hmm. Metaverses are worlds, and the and worlds require social immer immersion. What makes a metaverse immersive is other people. Okay. Like if you don't get out of the real end, then it's not immersive. Now, um, so that's that's actually why a lot of the metaverses now are very low poly, like especially crypto box. It looks like Minecraft. Right. Um, it's because anyone can get in because it runs on your browser. You don't need a download. So you can open a link. Like you can open like the uh, unique one uh, gallery. Just write in like unique dot decentricity with like the dot city, mm -hmm. decentry city. So uh, and it, it will just spin up on your browser as a gallery and you can just walk around. You can use your mobile phone for it. There is uh, that, that word again, bridge, right? Bridging from the real world to the metaverse becomes very transparent and somehow more real. So when you ask me like, what is reality? I think the metaverse is reality. I think the physical, I think physical reality is also reality. I think, yeah. Bitcoin is real, Ethereum is real. If you don't think Bitcoin is real, send me your Bitcoin, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Reality is what we define it to be. It's a common illusion that we have now because we have all of these digital devices and we have these interplanetary blockchains. Um, the reason I prefer having these things on the blockchain instead of actually having major corporations control it, I think it's clear. No one should control your reality. No one should mediate your reality. Because at the end of the day, that's what they're doing. They're mediating your reality. They're mediating your opinions of reality. They're mediating like what you see in your timelines. Rather than doing that, let's you know, have something decentralized and owned by the community and make it like a, a, you know, a common illusion. But it's a common illusion. Like everyone decides. And... Uh, that's the best version of reality I can have them. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you were on this, this week's episode. You know what? I am going to be watching with bated breath about this bird Picasso. And just one more time before we get out of here, how can anyone interact with that, follow that story, witness the burning of this Picasso? Mm, you can go to Unique Decentricity again if you'd really like to see the Picasso in world even before it gets burned. So the, the NFT is actually already in world. So there are actually currently two copies, physical and digital. Once the physical is burned, the only copy would be the digital. Uh, the NFT form is in Unique Center City and you find it, like there's like a, this, this unique one logo that is spinning and a bit of an explanation. You click the, the image of the Picasso and you basically get teleported directly to where the Picasso is, like the, the NFT Picasso. Um, and if you go to like the Twitter, burnt Picasso, at burnt Picasso, you can actually uh, wait for it to be physically burned and live streamed. That is coming really soon, um, in a day or two, I guess, June 30th, around June 30th. And you need to wait on like the Twitter account until it basically gives it to you, like the live stream, like. Fantastic. Well, uh, I'll, we'll definitely have you back because this is a whole fascinating sub world. 
metaverse if you want <laughs> when it comes to the podcast like i'm kidding yeah. uh but we'll definitely have you back on the show because i this is like a whole new world for me i'm learning bit by bit and week by week and uh yeah uh thank you so much all right hey uh thank you and y y you guys should actually visit the metaverse uh because it's, it's really cool uh there's a lot of social interactions you can have and this is not a plug. I, I'm not invested in any way in crypto voxels except for owning land. But go to crypto voxels. Crypto voxels is amazing. It's 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 insane. You can walk around and like meet people. It looks very low poly. It looks very like unrealistic. But the thing is, realism is an important. What's important is the immersion that you get from other people. And there's a lot of people there. So yeah, I mean that's 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 me. Um, and Thank you, Flavo. Thank you for having me. My pleasure.